Stupid decisions. I make those all the time. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Vox Machina's ability to formulate a plan and then succeed in executing it have not changed. Uh, <laughs> I've always failed, uh, and yet somehow succeeded at the end. Um, but yeah, other than like, the difference in small talk and probably the. Uh, no, Sam's always been as weird as he is. <laughs> yeah, no, not much has changed beyond that. It's just nice. Are you talking about how weird Sam is? <laughs> how, how things have changed or not changed from doing private games to the stream. Did we talk about all the food we ate? Because <laughs> <laughs> we ate so much food. Yeah. <laughs> I will say, is like, like... impression right now? What? Is that your Tiberius impression right now? So much so food. So no, the, uh, the... I, I do kind of miss the, the morning D&D mimosas a little bit. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like smoked salmon. Yeah, like we had like a whole brunch. That was nice. Yeah, we, uh, we got to be there. Yeah. That's so central to the city of us. I have a quiche. Can we go shopping right now? <laughs> There's more emotional stuff once the stream started, that's for sure. Yeah. The first time somebody started crying, even I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> that's not true, it actually went down pre-stream. Oh, that's true, that's true. That, that was some emotion in that sequence. We were 
Well, well we, we also, we can remember more now, like than week to week, because we're playing regularly, which before we play like every six weeks or so. Yeah. So we'd be like, we take the first 30 minutes, be like, Matt, tell us what all we did. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so glad we're past that. <laughs> Love you guys. Love you too. Um, <laughs> first uh, watch your show got me actually into playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah! So, Woo! Uh, <laughs> um, the next few days we have a popularity of you know, nerd things coming more mainstream. <laughs> uh, popularity of these TV shows like The League. Have you guys thought of maybe making a TV show or web series based off your critical role outside of the character in the game and in character? Like reality style? Yeah, reality style, um, social aspect, and then you guys can. Well, I've always wanted cameras following me around. <laughs> <laughs> so, we did, it did get talked about at one point, but it didn't go forward, and I think part of it is because we were like, and then there is also a part where we're like, ah, what's really exciting on that three and a half, four hours on screen, that's awesome. We're really boring all the time. <laughs> Oh, we want to expose that. I'm not that cool. Yeah, so, yeah those, those cameras calling back to my, uh, my office. They can watch me tear my hair out and trying to create interesting stories. For you. See, that actually sounds more interesting. <laughs> they, they follow me and drive us home, they would just get us laying on our carpet playing with Charlie. Pants <laughs> <laughs> on. Uh, yeah, it's going to work out for that. Yeah, 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 um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that if there's going to be anything that, that comes out of this that is on brand and kind of doesn't doesn't feel like it's it's capitalizing on the show and is more just a natural expansion of it. So you know, we'll we'll see. We, we definitely don't want to jump out of the gate. But if you guys like this, well, try the new breakfast cereal. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Scanlan should just talk all of that stuff. This is true. This is true. It's on brand. <laughs> I don't even shit as a person. I don't know. 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 Come get at us, General Mills. We're waiting for you. First of all, coming here is, you know, obviously not in LA, so it's quite good to see you here at the time. I have a question for Matt. Um, I'm looking for a while well, in search of black powder somewhere in search of black There's a guy I saw on Craigslist once. <laughs> that always ends well. And actually, I think the black powder version encounter is the best example you can have of fantasy Craigslist in a game setting. That's that's usually part of the course where you come back. Where's my couch? Where are you taking comfort? I've never had an NPC be forcefully dragged by a community into other games. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, so, yes, anytime, please come by. <laughs> from my <out> game. <laughs> I love that Kaylee doesn't quite know that he's missing limbs because she can totally fix it. <laughs> I don't think I've ever You've never met him again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and person doesn't know you haven't, so yeah. You want to fix people's limbs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you Wait, 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 did you have that when Max had like no toes? No. Um, six, seven, six or seven, eight, six, 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 six. Yeah. So, you lose a finger. I'm set. So I can chop off my arm. Don't like it. It's not, it's not like it. It's, it's, don't, no. That's a great guinea pig. What if I chop off my head? <laughs> it doesn't fix instant death. It's not like. It's not going to be alive for a long time. Okay. okay. Yeah. Although I, I will say, I do love the idea of Grog growing a portion of one tiny baby arm growing up. <laughs> First off, thank you for what y'all done and letting us enjoy your show and your game and letting us be a part of it. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, 
I have a question more so on the aspect of if one of the characters were to ever go down, solid bitch. <laughs> what you would bring in as your alternate character, or bring in you came back to show it all now, like kind of, you can't come back. <laughs> changes from day to day, yeah. but I know we've all pretty much said they'd be the total opposites of whatever we're playing now. I'd be a tavern witch. <laughs> Sorcerer or art or something like that. It's not that bad. If you're a wizard, then yeah, you gotta be ready to have an encyclopedia at your disposal. That's why they have the book, right? Yeah. Wizards yeah. have the book. Wizards have the book. Because they can be like, alright, what, <laughs> what am I learning today? And when else the party goes, oh. Another round of bacon, I guess. <laughs> Honestly, the tinkering rules are kind of vague, 
but they're intentionally vague by the system, so you can kind of do what I do and kind of create your own way of letting them occur. Which I think is a cool system that 5th edition's kind of done. They've kind of given you the tools to figure out, in some cases, however you want to try and make it function, which I like. Thank you so much. Did you get all that? <laughs> <laughs> I am trapped. Good, good. That's her form of form of form. Don't worry, Travis delays his own. I said thank you. She made this out of a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That's really cool. Look at this. Okay, so uh, maybe like a lot of people here, I uh, thanks for coming for roll. I'm cutting my teeth on the Emmy. Uh, uh, so I'm going to take you to the person who might know that, so it kind of uh, works for and against me, uh, I guess as a DM. Uh, so Matt, from your perspective, have you ever, do you ever experience when you're trying to explain something and maybe you're a couple of minutes into it and you've got this awesome idea and you're trying to explain it to your group uh, and you find that maybe your eyes are blazing over and, uh, but, you're, wait, but it's, it's my head, I've got to show it to you. But maybe you feel like you're going too long and how do you balance your, uh, I got to describe the scene and this area, but what detail can really hurt it? Being concise. Uh, and, and yeah, you learn, you learn that, <laughs> you learn that uh, it's, it's one of these comes with experience as well. Because yeah, you may have an, an extremely elaborate write-up for certain circumstances. And uh, yeah, and it's also the presentation aspect of it too. Like I've, I've gone into a few backstory diatribes with you guys and exposition ups with certain PCs when you were asked the right questions. And you can still keep your attention as long as you say it with conviction. Because there is a king going, and then the gods created the land, and then there was a, a place that happened, and then people went, yay, and going, but then the gods created the land, and the people went, yay. <laughs> Your details. When you finish writing up a description of a new location, go back through it again and be like, how can I eliminate a few of these sentences? How can I use different adjectives? And by the way, thesaurus.com is your friend. <laughs> uh, both just learn new cool vocabulary words, but as a way to find, you know, truncate the ideas you're trying to get across. Um, truncate. Truncate's a word. It's a good word. It's kind of <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah it's just, just take a moment to go comb through what you put down and find ways to kind of condense it a little little tighter. And when you do, say, <laughs> say it to your party. Conviction. Cool. Thank you. I like that one. I just answered. <laughs> 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 okay, just go ahead. <laughs> so, so, my question is a little bit of background. So, I, I didn't start playing DD until after college. I always thought of it as some sort of like, Competitive game, uh, <laughs> competing in levels and like loot, and then one man just making arbitrary decisions about who was succeeding or not. <laughs> and Stephen wins. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And it didn't make any sense to me. And then recently, when I, I kind of took it as more of like group storytelling. It really like, like, oh, that's awesome. I started watching shows, years of course. Um, and I learned a lot of lessons. I tried to take everything I can, and any, any cool ideas, and try to bring it to my own games. Um, the number one thing I take from your show, believe it or not, is I love the way you guys like um, cheer each other on. It's it's something I bring to my own games. It makes them so much better. Like you're constantly like cheering for one another, and I find when I do it, like everybody just has a much better time. Um, so I'm just my question, I guess, is. Uh, you know, do you have anything you you like a mindset you bring in, or just tips or tricks you use to make sure that the experience is fun for everybody? Because that I think is the most important part, and I think you do it so well that that's why maybe your show is my favorite in a lot of people's. Aww. Yeah. Wait, well, I, re I remember like the very first time we ever played. Um, Matt like took me aside in some room because was it just Laura and I were talking to that guy? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, you intimidated him, right? You intimidated him, yeah. He was like, he was like, I didn't want to intimidate him. And I was like, I, I don't know. God, what is this question? And I was like, can I do anything? He's like, you can certainly try. <laughs> we're like, we were back in the bedroom of your apartment, right? You were away from the rest of the table. Yeah. The whole plan was just Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, I, remember, I like reached out and grabbed him by the throat, like picked him up. And he was like, oh, this is great. <laughs> and I asked him 
him later, I was like, is there anything that you don't like about certain aspects of the game? He's like, only when people play it safe. Like, don't don't play it safe. Safe can be so boring. You know, it's, it's a fantasy world, it's your imagination, there are all these things happening, so don't play it safe. I'm like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> You know that the whole party, like we're all friends, and we do genuinely want to cheer each other on and encourage each other. And, and you know, like if Rob has a fight with just one other person, we genuinely are interested in her watching it like a sporting event. And you know, Sam was turning into a rhinoceros. It was, it was so good. We're not anything for like an hour, but it was one of the best games I ever played because it was so much fun to watch him do all of those crazy things. Yeah, we turned into the crowd. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's kind of interesting. I never really thought about it before, I guess, you like talking about cheering each other on, but it's kind of like supporting your buddies in the gym. Come on, bro, you got this. Three more reps, three more reps. Come on, come on, come on. Don't quit, don't quit. Um, so, and yeah, I think it does create like a different kind of support structure. And, and as a dungeon master, it, it helps to, to instill the idea that, by the way, guys, if, if one of you does poorly, and it's going to mess up all of you. <laughs> so you want to try to succeed, because it only helps all of you. You know, and, and, and it's, it, it's kind of your job as a dungeon master to help kind of sculpt a story that promotes uh, unity in the group as well. You know, it, 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 it's fun at certain times to instill tension in the group, but sometimes it happens naturally. But because it happens naturally sometimes, you kind of have to, to try and facilitate that, uh, that idea of everyone working together as, as group of friends and supporting each other. Um, so try your best, at least in the early part of a campaign, to try and pit players against each other because they can breed unfortunate emotions. When, they, when they're comfortable in their space, they're playing for a while, and they all have kind of built that before, that's when you can tweak it here and there for, for cool story moments. But you still want to facilitate, as the, as the, the head storyteller, um, you know, as the master. As the master, if you will. Uh, to make sure that everyone feels that, that, that to succeed and continue, uh, friendship is the answer. <laughs> yeah. The rare moments of conflict are about that. When Percy tried to keep me from getting the skull, we were all like <coughs> smiling our asses. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's another thing. Like, even, even when you have conflict, I think a lot of times it scares of what the party is part. And you, just, just being able to do it and still be okay with it. Right? Yeah, yeah. Kind of goes with that. Well, I think kind of Matt touched on this a little bit, but keeping in mind, there's not a whole lot of opportunities for group co-op games. So keep that in mind and really utilize it as a team. Hot prop. I make it sound awful. I mean, it's... Whatever, just have fun. <laughs> Uh, I want it to be, 
I'm just jumping here. Yeah, go. No, go. Um. <laughs> I wanted to be a rogue, and I wanted to be a half elf. And then um, Liam told me he was a rogue. <laughs> and I was really angry. And then he said he was already a half elf, and I was also really angry. <laughs> so I decided to, I asked Matt, I'm like, okay, so my two things that I'm thinking of being are a druid or a ranger, which one of these gets to have an animal? And he said, both. Oh, that's a shit. <laughs> Um, and then, so, and then, what did he say? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so I said to be a ranger, and then I was like, hey, Leo, I just want to be a half elf, but we're actually on the same birthday in real life, so maybe we can be twins in the game, too. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, I like it, so we did it. Thank you for the damn names. <laughs> well, Vex has been a name that I always go to, like, whenever I play any of my, like, mini video games. I always, like, like, and so Vex is when I already went to, and so I was like, I'm gonna be Vex Sully, and he's like, fine, I wanna be the Vex. Oh, no. <laughs> as long as there's no bus for me in it, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're really open. Yeah, we were really bad, and I thought the apostrophe was me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> also, the apostrophe. Um, I came in at last because I actually helped the first game, and then when it turned into a campaign, I was like, okay. Yeah, but this is going to turn into a thing, then I'll join. So yeah, I did play that first game. I was like, I was Matt's like assistant. I basically just pointed yeah. at stats when they were confused. I just went, it's right there. Um, <laughs> and, oh, oh yeah, cool. Um, <laughs> so many distractions. Um, so yeah, and I, I think I was also torn between a ranger and a druid, and Matt was like, well, Lord's already a ranger. And I was like, cool. Be a druid then. <laughs> I think you tried druid in fourth edition, yes. and then you hated it. I hated it. Yeah, I, I, I tried druid in fourth edition. They were basically like a watered down support class that wasn't. They were like trying to be jack all trades, but it just meant that they just sucked at everything. They just sucked at everything. Um, and so I hated it. So I was like, all right, I'll give druids one last chance. <laughs> And then she's my long short character. Yeah. I was also like, I'm also like, I'm not a nice person. I never play nice people. It's so hard to play nice people in RPGs, but it's a one shot. <laughs> I guarantee you that either if, if, if Keila goes away or the campaign finishes, you're going to make a character. You're such a bitch. Selfish and evil. Chaz up on man. I'm not going to be like a dog run spring on man. I'm just going to go crazy. I get along with everybody, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, to answer your question for me, um, I was inspired in Dungeon Master from having a really bad Dungeon Master. <laughs> at first, you know, six months of playing, and uh, I love the game. I can see the, the potential for it, the potential for storytelling, and, and the guy who was running it was just really, 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 really hard to enjoy. It wasn't about the story more than it was, let's go kill things, and also I have my own character who's uh, in second edition, a paladin, but I'm also going to take the samurai fighter kit because of the DM and I can do that, so he's a samurai paladin who wielding magical components. And also got his got his rhythm down, he had his holy sword, and his holy quest was to wake up and his god went here. Uh, so yeah, I, I, it was very difficult to explain the end. And uh, I, I knew along the way it was like, no, no, I'm gonna run my own game. So I that my whole inspiration I was driven to do it because I was gonna take bad examples of it. Uh, and then I was just fumbling in the dark for years, going, I guess this is how it works. This is how most of us did it when there wasn't examples of it. Uh, you, you newer folk have such an easier time. You were creating a boy in a vacuum. Um, wow, I said a really old and crashing there. I'm scared, you don't know it was like. We, we had to do reverse math for AC and Taco. <laughs> <laughs> I seriously appreciate you skipped that area, because that, that was pretty good. Uh, yeah, that, that's basically my inspiration. Okay, and two more things. One, uh, Laura, I share the same birthday. Yeah! Um, and also, uh, a few weeks ago, a tattoo appeared on Twitter of uh, Critical Role, and it said, how do you want to do this in a question mark? Yeah. That's oh, no way! That's you! And we are passing this around for our text. Oh. Right? Oh. <laughs> 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 oh, 
<laughs> that wasn't my doing though, but it was still pretty sad. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't want to spoil too much, just in case people are behind, but uh, there, there, is, there is a location in the world that I spend a lot of time fleshing out, designing, a lot of character and structure, and then in one fell swoop, just tearing it down. <laughs> <laughs> Very weirdly cathartic. It's like, it's like spending hours building a sand castle and just jumping on it. It's, it's weirdly human. I made this! <laughs> <laughs> Larping. Do you guys have you guys ever done it? Would you ever want to do it? Because for the new intro, you dressed up as all your characters and had a lot of fun doing that. Thanks. And cool. Uh, <laughs> I've uh, I've, I've learned a little bit of Vampire the Masquerade back in like 2000. And uh, I didn't come in with a great experience, unfortunately, because I came into a very very well run, long running group of like 40 people in Simi Valley in LA. And uh, I got thrown in the middle of a giant political struggle as a very important political figure with no idea about how any of the political structure works. And everyone, and everyone turned to me be like, you, royal princess, my friend, tell me how they're like, I don't know what's going on! <laughs> I'm sure, that guy! <laughs> so it was a little, a little stressful. As far as like more fantasy LARPing and stuff, I haven't done it yet. I know one of these days I will. I'm scared to do it because I know I'll enjoy it far too much. <laughs> I have so little free time as it is. It's gonna be one of those things like, what else can I give up? <laughs> <laughs> to make this happen. Sure, I'm gonna be But uh, I, 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 I'd probably get too into it if we did. Come do madness with Lulu. What? Come do madness with Lulu. Oh, wow. Well, as you were saying, um, the three of us have kind of sort of casually large for the call of Lulu party. That That's true, yeah. yeah. I tricked you guys into LARPing. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I ran like a 1920s style. Uh, it was awesome. Like a Cthulhu based birthday party and wrote everyone's character stories and they all came in costume. And once everyone arrived in character for the next four hours, solving puzzles and wandering the house and discovering you know, ways to, to get the story. And it all went to shit because everybody started hoarding all the secrets. Yeah. <laughs> it turned into like a Mexican standoff. It's like Yuri pulled out his his uh, Tommy gun prop and he brought it in. That was what was crazy. We were like, everyone's a gangster, wasn't he? Yeah. They were like 19. He was, was a secret force that showed up with like a, a giant violin case. He was like, I'm the musician. He <laughs> <laughs> pulled out a Tommy gun and it was like between him and Lena. They all started pulling guns at each other and it's like a giant standoff. Like, where did these go? We did not bring these and provide these. Well, it was a perfect allegory. Like, it could have been a social experiment for how the world's gonna end. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God, it went very poorly, very fast. Yeah, the answer is devoured by the army. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Good question. Hello. Hello. Uh, of course, Coach Travis. Uh, uh, go Cowboys. Yeah, Cowboys! <laughs> uh, and I got a question for most of you, or for all of you, what is my name? Keith Morgan for uh, Matt. Cool. I would fist fight Gaston. <laughs> so we start with Corella the Bill, that actually leads into a confrontation with Gaston, which then goes to the ultra Big villain, one. Ursula, who you think is the main villain, until you defeat her and the mountain explodes and Chernobog arrives. <laughs> 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 I know, that's how I know you're awesome! <laughs> so, um, as a voice actor question, about a year ago I was playing Elder Scrolls Online and I met a tree that sounds like Grog. Does that happen to you guys a lot? Like, you're playing a game and you hear, oh, I know that guy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, there's no game you can play now that you're not like, oh, hi, hey, Matt. Oh, yeah. hey, oh, hey, 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 h
Shut up, Troy. <laughs> that, that's my favorite, is being like, oh, shut up, Laura. Like, <laughs> people <laughs> the screen. But when it's surprising, when you, when you know somebody, like if I know Matt or something, and then I find out he was the voice, and I had no idea, that's always really fun to like, you know somebody so well, and they can still surprise you with these voices. Oh, are we out of time? Yeah, I think this has to be long for. Last one. Sorry, guys. I know, I know. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, sorry. 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 Oh, or curves like you guys did in the first live show. <laughs> oh, I gave her a call. Fine. <laughs> That's just... <laughs> How do you guys deal with the nerves without the alcohol? Oh. <laughs> How do you deal with the nerves without the alcohol? Because uh, I don't drink at the games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not allowed to, but that's interesting. <laughs> um, no, for me, I mean, uh, a lot of people. We didn't do that. No. You chose that. I, because I wanted to be on the top of the I did. I did. I did. A lot of us come from a theater background, and there's something about just being on stage that it, the nerves are there. You, you, you learn to harness that energy in a way. Like, it, they, they never really go away. And I think we'll all agree. Like, even getting up for, you know, all the guys have been on stage for years and years and years, and, and then. Like you and E3 going on to talk about gears. Mm. Like, how nervous was that? Oh, I'm so nervous. <laughs> so, There's so many people. It never goes away. Uh, and so, the best thing you can do is do your best to harness that energy and turn it into excitement. And it, it's there's no real trick to it aside from some people want alcohol, I guess. But uh, <laughs> but just learning learning to, <laughs> learning to know that you're there for a reason and that people are there to support you and not tear you down. And there's something exciting about that. And usually once you get through that initial moment, like, you'll have the nerves. Like, whenever I would do musicals, I would always, my voice would crack at my very first song because I was so nervous that I couldn't contain it, that I would, I would always crack. And then after that crack was done, I knew the rest of the show was going to be the bomb because I'd gotten it out of my system and it was fine. So you just, like, play into it, you know, get it out of the way, and then everything else will be fun after that. What they said. <laughs> gifts that we're going to give out to people at the live show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Ashley will be there. 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 Yeah, Ashley and uh, again, poor panel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, no. It's just me. Oh, oh it's just you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yes, Matt and I are now signing at the Green Road in you. At 12.30. At 12.30 and 1.30. And then we're there. signing at 3, right? We're signing at 3. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. We're more important than that. True. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks so much for coming. Enjoy the rest of your Gen Con. We'll see you around. And...